Hello everyone. Today I'm going to be going over how to connect ADFS to your Proxmox environment. This will facilitate single sign-on, client certificate authentication if you have that set up in your environment, and create a much more seamless flow to log into your virtual environment. So once everything's connected, it should look something like this. It'll log in, send you to your ADFS portal. Then you'll be able to sign in if you have forms or use certificate authentication. If you have certificate authentication in your environment, uh, it will look like this. And once you're in, it'll sign you in. You will have your username at the realm and you can set up permissions based on the groups in Active Directory to facilitate a seamless flow onto your environment. All right, let's get started with heading over to the certificate authority server if you're using an internal CA. If you have an SL cell cert, you can probably just skip this part. So we'll go ahead and connect to our certificate authority server here. Okay, from here we'll open up certificate authority and go ahead and click manage certificate templates. You can use the predefined web server template or you can duplicate it and create your own. Go ahead and click properties on there and make sure your server has read and enroll permissions. So I'll go ahead and re-add it. Read and enroll. All right. So now we'll head to the server we'll be configuring ADFS on. Go ahead and add the role. But when that installs, we'll go ahead and request a certificate. I'll select the internal web servers, give it a common name, uh, the server name, or the ADFS service name, whatever you want, really. And then make sure you add the DNS alternative name. We'll be doing ADFS2 for this. And if you're using client authentication, you will want to add a subdomain of cert auth. Make sure the certificate enrolled. Now we can go ahead and configure ADFS. You can leave the first option of creating the first federation server. Make sure you're using a account with domain admin permissions. And for SSL certificate, you will select the one you just requested and enrolled. And the federation service name will automatically be populated with the DNS alternative name you selected. If it's on the wrong one, go ahead and switch that. For the display name, you can put whatever you want here. This is the title bar of the ADFS web page. So I'll put, I'll put number two. This is my second ADFS form. We'll go ahead and click next. Now, this is where you can create a group managed service account or you can use an existing account or an existing group managed service account if you have it set up for it. I would recommend using a group managed service account. This way Active Directory can handle the rotation of the passwords and you don't have to worry about the account being locked out or the account expiring. So we'll go ahead and name this AFS SA2. And you can specify the location of a SQL Server database if you have one externally from this. Or you can create a database on the server using Windows internal database. The advantages of this is if you use a external SQL Server, if you have to create a second ADFS server or a third in the same form, 
it can just use the database on that SQL server instead of having to repopulate a Windows internal database on each one. For this purpose, we'll be using the Windows internal database. So I had an ADFS server on this server before. We'll go ahead and overwrite existing ADFS configuration database. All right, go ahead and click next. We'll do the prereqs check. All right, once the prereqs have passed successfully, go ahead and click configure. All right, go ahead and click close. We'll open up ADFS management. All right, from here, I like to enable IDP initiated sign on page to test ADFS as I go on with the next few steps. So I'll go ahead, open up PowerShell. We'll go ahead and set ADFS properties, enable IDP initiated. to true there, once that's set we can go ahead and start setting up our DNS records I'm using Pi-hole you will set it up on whatever DNS server surface you're using go ahead and create C names for this we'll do AFS2 that we were and we will put the server name here. Go ahead and add that and add cert auth as well. Right. Let's go ahead and test this. So, set up, we can get to the page, you can see your certificates, the sign-in options here, and you can test that. Alright, so sign-in worked. So now we can start configuring the application in ADFS. We'll go back to the ADFS server. Make sure you're in the ADFS management console here. And then go ahead and select application groups. We're going to add application group here. We're going to start with the server app. Name this whatever you like. I'll name it Foxmox. Okay. You're going to want to copy that client identifier. Paste it in the notepad. Right. The redirect URI will be the Proxmox web page. This should be there. <laughs> We'll go ahead and generate a shared secret. Copy this because it will be hidden after. We'll go ahead and put that in the notepad as well. Right. So that's configured. We're going to go ahead and add application again and select web API. For the identifier, you will use the client ID. And you can specify access control policy if you want to do that now. Do that later. And here you can select the permitted scopes. We'll do open ID, log insert, 
and we'll do profile for the claims yeah, that should be we'll do email right. we'll go ahead and click next click OK our application should be showing here and we'll go ahead and head to the web API and we have to set up some issuance transform rules for Proxmox so we'll do the send LDAP attributes as claims we'll name this whatever you want in the attribute store active directory we'll go ahead and start with the SAM account name first we'll set this to preferred username claim we'll do the email address to email then use your principal name to name and give a name to give a name with space then the token groups if you're going to want to read active directory groups for proxmox grouping We'll go ahead and set this to token groups unqualified names and the outgoing outgoing claim type to group. Okay. And you can just click finish. Okay. Good. Now we can head to Proxmox. Once you're in Proxmox, go ahead down to Data Center and Realms. We're gonna create a open ID connect server. In the issuer URL here, you can go ahead and and put your server name. Sorry, the service name of your ADFS service slash ADFS. The name of the RAM. This could be whatever you want to see when you're signing in. We'll do ADFS two. And now the client ID we'll copy it over. And the client key is just secret. All right, scope here, we leave it on default. We can select auto create users. And then the username claim we'll be using is username. For the group claim, we'll use group. All right, and we can go ahead and click advance. You wanna uncheck a user info endpoint for ADFS, and I'll remove default. If you want it to be the default realm when you log into Proxmox, you can leave that checked. Go ahead and click Add. We go ahead and test this now by going to Incognito. And changing the realm to the one you just created. Right, authentication failed. Looks like we forgot to add a client permission here. Yep, so you have to make sure you also have all at claims enabled. All right, let's test that again. All right, now that we're in, now we can start working on proper group permissions. You head over to your domain controller and create the group that you want to use for administrative rights or whatever rights you plan on setting up. I have one here already called Proxmox Admins 2. You want to add your user as a member of that group. All right, then you can head over back to Proxmox and select your realm. Make sure you have overwrite groups checkmark. Then you can head over to groups, create your group name. This will be Proxmox admins two dash the realm name. So Proxmox can tie those two together. And we will set up the permissions for that group. I'm gonna go ahead and give it admin rights. Okay, now we can test that. Okay. 
Looks like it's still coming down. I'll refresh that. Sign out, sign in. All right, now I have all my rights as an admin. And in the future, if you need to give admin rights to Proxmox to users, you can essentially manage that by adding the user to the group you created. All right, now we can, let's go ahead and work on setting up certificate authentication if you plan on using it and moving ADFS to the modern web page. All right, so head back to ADFS, select the authentication methods. You can hit edit primary authentication methods here. And if you want to use forms in Windows authentication, you can leave that enabled. I will be using certificate authentication only and you want to use the modern web page you can go ahead and select allow additional authentication providers and then select the authentication method I'll be using certificate authentication but you go ahead and click OK we can test that by going to the initiated sign-on page All right now we are there let's test authentication authentication is working uh, let's go ahead and test the certificate selection by opening an incognito. All right, and we'll go ahead and select that certificate. And it looks like it's working. So let's go ahead and verify on Proxmox that it's working. Okay, and it worked. Now, if you want to use Windows Authentication, you can just select that. Let's test it out. And you can enter your user credentials in there. Now, if you are seeing a error 500 when trying to sign into the realm using ADFS, I have seen the issue come from using a self-signed certificate or a internal CA certificate and you can fix that by going into each Proxmox host and move over your root certificate authority certificate into the trusted root store of each Proxmox host so for this you would have to run you put the certificate in whatever directory you want I'll make a directory called cert and then you can just drop it in here using whatever protocol you want sftp or you can just copy and paste the base 64 certificate uh, then you'll use this command to move it over to the local ca certificate directory and then you'll run update ca certificates it will add the certificate you placed in there to the certificate store and you will be good to go. The host will trust certificates signed by that root certificate authority. And you should be good to go now. All right. So we covered creating ADFS and adding it to Proxmox and setting up proper group permissions to create a seamless flow of authentication into your virtual environment. If you guys are having any issues, or any questions, please leave it in the comments below. If there's anything else I can help you guys with, please let me know. Please leave a like, subscribe, and comment. Thank you for watching.